I'm here at Folsom Lake Greetings. in California Welcome to show to you how Lake. I go about State rigging my McGregor 26X Rose sailboat. Hill, I bought my boat in June of 1998 and, and I bring it out here to the lake two to three times like a week and just showing you how I, as an amateur, will go ahead and rig the boat in about 12 this minutes. Nothing I'm Do doing not here is meant home. for everyone. I hope all that you all take what you see and uh, you uh, adapt it to your best use, but right do it at your own risk. I, I hope that no one uh, uh, gets hurt by trying to do something that they're not uh, able to do. Anyway, you, so I'm going to come out here and rig the boat the way I do it on a regular basis, and you'll see uh, all the steps that I take in close-up form at a separate shot, and I hope that what we can do is save some time. One of the things that I do is is, is going to be uh, raising the mast without a mast raising kit, and, and you may need to have one of those. If so, and, uh, uh, you can get it through McGregor so Corporation. At this point, I'm just going to go back and just rig the boat and run through it as I normally would, and then we'll have some close-up shots of it after that. And this will help others that have the boat to be able to spend more time on the water and less and, time And then I will, we'll go through the, the launch and then we'll the go through line. some uh, raising so the sails and dropping the sails. And I'll give you some tips on uh, setting the sails a little bit in a separate video. Uh, we're going to do some digging, de rigging on the water. I'm going to show you some tips on, off, on uh, how to launch the boat and some other little things about rigging that you will find benefit you all the way. One, uh, uh, one step may uh, be steps, good so. uh, for single-handing, and most of this work is done single-handed. So now I'm going to start by first unhooking the trailer harness, and that's the first thing I do when I arrive at the launch ramp. Now, on the back side of the boat, what I'm doing is I'm going around to untie the dock lines that are on the aft docking cleats uh, to hold the mast stable for trailering. So there's one line on each aft docking cleat, and what I do is I leave the line hook, looped over the cleat and then have it so that I can reach it from the dock when I launch the boat on each side. I never know which side of the dock I'm going to be on uh, when I launch because it, sometimes it's crowded and I back to the open ramp. Now I'm taking out the bolts that hold the rudders up for trailing, so they're just uh, nylon lock nuts that you can uh, loosen by hand, and there's one for each of the rudders. Then I just push the ballast valve uh, handle down because I'm going to be powering for a bit and I won't want the ballast to fill. The other thing that I did is I raised the motor slightly to raise the bracket and then uh, so that's set to lower now uh, without in the trailing position. Now I'm taking the two bolts that were in the rudders and I stick them just under the mat in the back of the van so they don't roll around and get lost and they're right where I can find them when I'm derigging the boat. I keep a dock line also on the bow cleat there, and I uh, usually just stick it in the anchor locker, but it always stays hooked on. And I, I coil it up on the top of the anchor locker there to act as a, uh, a doormat, if you will, for my street shoes, so I don't get mud or, or grease on the, on the boat right there on the top of the anchor. So I move my shoes and walk forward. The first step on the boat is to untie the little small rope that I have that goes from the mast step plate up around the mast to help stabilize it. The next is a dock line that I have wrapped around the mast right at the aft end of the cabin top. And this is the one that holds the shrouds from uh, scraping on the gel coat or bouncing on the top of the deck. And so this is just one dock line that's wrapped around a few times uh, to make a pad for the shrouds. And then it goes around a couple of times to hold the shrouds actually in place. So that dock line uh, is one that I keep uh, handy just for, just for that use. I store it right down in the, in the fuel locker on the port side. Now, the next step is to un undo the uh, dock line that I have around the aft end of the mast that's tied off on the two dock cleats. And I untied that when I was on the ground. Now I'm going to be un unhooking or unbolting the mast crutch bolt, and that bolt is used to hold the, secure the mast and the aft stay and the fore stay. So I just undid the, the aft stay. There's a piece of Velcro I have on there you'll see a close-up of later and uh, the aft stay stays connected to the back of the boat all the time. So it uh, does not need to be hooked up or unhooked at any time. Now the fore stay is on the port side of the mast and that one also is, is held into a coil type position with a small piece of Velcro. So I take the Velcro off, I hold the fore stay, put the bolt back in the mast crutch, stick the Velcro pieces right on the bolt, put the nut back on so I have it. And now I'm gonna walk forward with the mast crutch or excuse me, with the fore stay, and uncoil it as I go. Sometimes it gets a bit tangled up, but you just walk forward and uncoil it and lay it down on top of the deck uh, on the port side of the mast. And then you'll be hooking this up uh, as after the mast has been raised.
The next step is to unbolt the mast at the pulpit, the bow pulpit. And there's one bolt uh, and a stainless steel nut, uh, and that is just finger tight, and I've never had one come off or come loose. I set that down right under the centerboard cable to the starboard side of the mast, raising, mast step plate. Then I lift up the mast, slide to the side, and pull one spreader up. Then I lift the mast higher and pull the other spreader up above the lifeline. You'll see a close-up of that later. Then slide the mast back, of course looking back for people or other cars behind it. If you raise it up high, it rolls back very easily. Then I actually almost sit on the mast to hold it steady right to line it up in the mast step plate. Pick up the bolt and slide it in, and then pick up the nut and give a little extra tight with the fingers, and then you're done with uh, bolting the mast. Now, I use the jib halyard line to, the jib halyard, excuse me, to uh, hold the mast up uh, once I've raised it. And then uh, uh, you'll see how this is done. So I'm untying the halyards at this point, and then I'm uncleating the jib halyard, and then I'm going to unbolt it or un unhook it from the U-bolt uh, on the mast and get it ready right next to the forestay on the top of the deck. Now I'm going to go back to the cockpit and check the shrouds, pull one at a time up, look at it, make sure it's not kinked, and then pull the second one up and look at the chain plate, make sure it's not kinked. Check the bolt end of the shrouds, there's two on each side. Do the same on the other side, pull the shroud up over the lifeline stanchion, check it, pull it up over the lifeline stanchion, check it, then check the other end. One there and one up there. The last thing down here is to straighten the aft stay. I did put a piece of plastic tubing on the end of the aft stay so that it would not be twisted uh, or bent down when I'm raising the mast. And so now I've got it so that the aft stay is on the starboard side of the rudder. Now get back up on the cabin top, make sure the hatch is all the way closed, and pick up the jib halyard and the forestay and Pick and then gather the, the lines, the ropes that are on the mast. Watch the batch cru mast crutch for tangles under the mast bolt, and then slowly and steadily push the mast up. It's a it's a slight lift, and then it's a shove. Then grab the halyard and walk forward of the mast, holding tight, and then uh, cleat the jib halyard onto the port bow cleat, good and tight. So wrap it around, and then cleat it off. Now I've got all the time I need to attach the forestay, uh, and I can take my time and make sure it's not twisted around the, the block at the top of the mast, and the first thing is to take out the ring ding and set it down right between the two cleats on the deck. Then take the clevis pin in the right hand, put your foot right starboard of the starboard bow cleat, lean against the bow pulpit, and take your left foot and use it as leverage on the jib halyard to push down to get more uh, slack for the, jib for the forestay. So by pushing with my left foot on the halyard, I am going to create more slack on the uh, jib on the forestay. Then, after the clevis pin has been inserted that way, I can insert the ring ding back in, spin it around fully, make sure it's in. Next step is to, for the first time now, open the uh, cabin, and uh, I can take the door off and set it down under the cockpit on the berth. Others have found a spot uh, behind or under the helm's, captain helm seat. Uh, it seems to fit in there if you do just a little bit of cutting or something on one corner. And then uh, I bring up my little cooler and the key. The little cooler sits right over the pedestal table guard and I, I keep my uh, remote control for the stereo in there and it's, a, it's got cup holders for uh, beverages. Uh, and then I put the key in of course and then bring the boom up uh, to the starboard side of the mast crutch and the port side of the aft stay. Set it on the mast crutch, always one hand for the boat and one hand for me, so hold on everywhere you go on the boat. Sit down on the top of the deck right next to the mast and then set the boom right up on your leg. There's two bolts, and you'll see a close-up of this later. There's two bolts that are in the uh, gooseneck. The first one you do is the uh, attachment of the boom and you can twist it and uh, hold it up in there to get more slack for the, for the bolt to go through. When you are removing this, if you push down on the bolt to create slack underneath it for the nut, it comes out easier. Then slide the sail forward and attach the second bolt through the clue of the sail and then bolt the sail to the, to the mast. 
Now I did a modification on the next part. It's called a, a boom vang, which is used to hold, or a downhaul, if you will, for the boom to prevent it from uh, going up and jiving. Now, I put a uh, $25 snap hook on there, Ron Stan snap hook, and snap shackle it's called, and that will enable me to quick release and quick attach the boom vang. Now set the sail into the track on the mast, and then get the halyard and attach it to the sail. Now I change, oh look up of course, make sure it's not twisted. I, I change that to a captive halyard, it's got a pin going through it so that if you leave it open, the metal fitting, stainless fitting, cannot come off of the loop in the rope, in the, in the halyard. Then cleat it off and coil the line, and I just stick the line from the bow toward the stern between the halyard and the mast. Now the main sheet tackle, the main tackle, goes onto the pedestal table guard, and I also have a snap shackle there for uh, quick, easy on and off. And I just set the sheet into the pedestal table guard as a unit to keep it off the floor for now. I do wrap the sheet line twice around the block so that it can't come accidentally released. Now the fenders I have accessible from the outside, you'll see a close up of this later, I can reach the hooks right inside the companionway and I put these uh, inexpensive snap hooks on the lines to uh, have them preset for the proper heights of the docks I use there at Folsom Lake. I put them on both sides, two on the port and two on the starboard, the same as I have the dock lines on port and starboard, because I don't know which side of the dock may be available when I actually pull there, pull up there to, to uh, launch the boat. So I'm able to go to either side of the dock depending on what's available, especially on a busy Saturday during the summertime. So this is how the boat looks when it's ready to launch. Fenders on both sides, dock lines on both sides, one dock line on the bow I can access from either side. Now in backing, you just have to have the boat mostly straight and be as close to the dock as possible. And this is the easy side to back on because you can look out your driver's window. On the other side, you must rely on your mirror. And turning the, turning the van too much will cause the boat to turn so you can't see much. So it's best to go forward farther than you need to and then back slowly as straight as possible. Now I back so that my van rear wheels are just touching the water. What that does is it puts the fenders, the steel fenders of the trailer, actually just under the top of the surface of the water. And this enables me to float the boat off very easily. Uh, that may be deeper than some would like to go, and, and sometimes the rent may not permit that. One benefit uh, of, uh, of single-handing this is that, you know, I'm, well, one problem with it, brother, is that I'm not able to drive the boat off the trailer and then uh, you know, have someone go park the van for me. So this is showing where I'm gonna walk the boat off and I, the same way I do it is I walk the boat back onto the trailer. I never once have driven it onto the trailer since I have to tie the boat up to go get the van anyway. My kids aren't old enough to drive, so I'm the only driver. Now I've got the, uh, I've got the bow hook being undone and I'm grabbing the bow dock line and I'm going to bring it around to the port side even though it is on the bow, starboard bow cleat. Then I'm going to just give the boat a little nudge off the trailer and step from the van onto the dock holding the bow dock line. I'm going to first tie off the dock line and then fortunately this dock only has a couple of cleats so it's, it's, uh, it's not very well set up. Now the boat's actually floating off of the trailer and the aft dock line is tied although very loosely. And so now I'm going to go back and retrieve the aft dock line and pull the boat in close to the dock. And I try when I am going to launch to choose a dock side that the boat will blow away from the dock, blow off the dock when launching. And I do the opposite when I'm coming in to retrieve the boat and take it out of the water. I try to choose a side that will allow the boat to blow onto the dock uh, because it makes it easier for uh, retrieving the boat to haul it out. But in this case, it's easy to leave because the boat just blows off the dock, and uh, then also it doesn't sit there and uh, be pushed against the dock with waves from other boats. So I'm all done launching. The boat's been tied uh, front and uh, aft and, and in the bow. And now I'm ready to pull the trailer out, just double check it's not, sometimes these docks move uh, because they're not really anchored very tightly. And so just make sure that the fender is not under the dock. 
So now uh, this just shows the how the boat the looks. Uh, close up for a second here. I am breaking on, when driving, um, but it's already boat is fully de rigged. I've, uh, and you know, we're going to go boat, through a rig the of the whole boat later. You can see the aft stay and the fore stay here. Where uh, this I shows the, the dock line that's holding the shrouds the around the mast. Uh, on, on and the boat ramp at one this day. point, the, and, uh, uh, the dock line is wrapped three or four times, times first, around, so the shrouds are not making contact the with, the, with the mast. Here's the halyards. Well, There's three of them. Out of the mast uh, the main, main and the two the, uh, know, four sails. On the bow, and, and then the right they're wrapped bear, around with just the uh, a, a simple when loop at the end. Then at the very anchor, end of the mast, you, you can see I have two plugs for the lights. This is the anchor light, which I added at the top of the mast for overnight anchoring. And the wire that goes down to the mast. And a separate plug coming out of the mast for that light that I just switched out. Now here's the Velcro around the fore stay, and, so I've got one on each and side. on the other this side is the, is the fore stay. Uh, aft stay, and which I'm touching right, right now, but also stay. has some Velcro to and hold, then I've got another and piece that keeps the things from looking quite so squirrely. The main then right here, here I, uh, this one is the dock line that goes the around the, the back of the mast the cleat on the at the aft dock and cleats, once and, then back down and that helps to prevent it from bouncing uh, when you're trailing. That you then can there's put a bracket the on the motor from Yamaha that is used to so that trail so, so that the boat uh, just doesn't put heavy strength stress on the hydraulic. This is where the boom is stored with my little cooler that I put around it, and here's the companion way. And I'm showing this and, uh, there's my horn uh, for right the Mayday there. report. On a Here's on the a, horn. I uh, just we'll hung it on a rubber band on a plastic so hook inside. I can just pull up on that horn, and it's readily accessible in emergency. Uh, I have an upsized fire, fire extinguisher stored below behind that. that I've got a then you can see the ski flag. And I have a whistle behind that as well. Now down here is where I have the hooks stored for the fenders. They just sit below the cockpit on the berth, behind the against the head. And those hooks are um, set for the pri proper height of the dock lines, uh, for the fenders at the dock line, rather. Now, having left the dock, uh, no ballast in the boat. We're powering underway. You can see the benefit of a 50 horsepower motor. We're powering at about 20 miles per hour, uh, going around the lake. Here you can see there's not much wind in this section of the lake. And so we're going to head to the North Fork, where the wind tends to funnel and uh, have a bit more available to sail. So this uh, has a 50 horsepower four-stroke motor, and the power is just being because the rudder's fully up and the center board is fully up, and there's a uh, ladder in the back of the Here's the view showing the boat as it's rigged. The good power is still attached to the port bow fleet. It stays there until I hang on the port sail, and then it gets here, and the sail comes off, and it goes right back on the bow fleet, so I'm ready any time to go to the boat. So I'm ready to get back to the boat. I'm full throttle. If you haven't put silicone on this them, like the, I haven't uh, yet, this is the one thing to check. They By twanging the shrouds, you, you can look at the ring dings the shrouds, on the shrouds on either side at any forward. time. They upper should be very lower, loose and side. wobbly. And if, if they're, they're not flopping, very, if they're stuck and they don't move, then they're starting to work their way out. Now I'm going to do a little um, a demonstration for you on raising and lowering the sails. I do carry three four sails. I have the standard jib which I use in heavy winds, and I have the 150 Genoa, which I use most of the time because I do lake sailing most of the time. And I also have the cruising spinnaker. So there's the regular jib. Then this is the bag for the Genoa. Since I used it last time, it's right where I was using it. It's just sitting inside the uh, forward hatch on the V-berth. And there's the cruising spinnaker. Now later on, actually in the sailing portion of the video, which is a separate video, uh, I do show flying uh, the Genoa and the Spinnaker at the same time with the mainsail. So three sails flying at the same time. So at this point, I can choose whichever sail is appropriate for the wind, and if it's real windy conditions, I can actually stand inside the hatch to de-rig or rig a sail. Uh, the only time I have to go to the mast is to uncleat the halyard from the cleat. So when you're flying the Gen Genoa or the Spinnaker on a run, so it's way out, I was pointing at the aft stanchions. You'll see a close-up later of how that, uh, how that uh, be is best fly. Now, just inside the hatch, sitting on top of the v is the Genoa sail. I, I'm out two or three times a week, so sometimes if it's wet, that's, the, that's easy for it to dry. When you grab it, get the bottom and make sure the sign, the Doyle label, is right side up. 
and they're showing the halyard line is ready. It was holding the mast up during the raise, and then uh, it's ready to attach to the sail. So the first thing is to grab the foot of the sail, make sure that the label is right side up so that you're attaching the sail properly. I sit right down on the deck. I do this on the water usually. This is the first time I've ever done this on land. But I sit with my feet dangling over the bow and enjoy the view of the water. First is to attach the foot of the sail to the uh, bow. And then there are nine clips for either the jib or for the Genoa that you attach uh, to the forestay. Now these clips uh, are called hank-on clips and they're fairly simple to put on and off and it's easier to work from the bottom up than the top down. So pull the sail, stretch it, make sure you don't have a twist so that when you're raising it the sail goes straight up and you don't have to stop midway. The last thing to do before you attach the halyard is to you know, make sure that it's not twisted around the forestay. So you un like uncleat it from the bow, take a look up there and see that it's not twisted around the block or around the forestay. Again, a captured halyard snack, uh, shackle, and that is not going to come loose uh, or come off the rope in any way because it has a little pin through it. Now, you, you, got, you must uh, set the sheets out. So first grab the sail right at the bottom where it's hooked to the boat and then slow or go back along the, the foot of the sail, the bottom of the sail, so that you can be sure that you don't have a twist. So now you know that's how the sail will be when it's raised. Then put your finger right between the sheet lines, the sheets rather, and go right through them so that you're separating them port and starboard. When you get to the end, now you know uh, which one is going to go to each side. You can stuff the rest of the sail back in the hatch. If you're going to be heading out for a bit and it's still windy, you might want to tie down the halyard onto the stanchion or the pulpit, rather, and that will keep it from flying up in the wind. You can also just close the hatch down there to prevent it from going up as well. So leave the hatch on. I took the, the um, lock off of the hatch because sometimes the sheet would get caught on it. So I have to put that back in when I want to secure the boat. Now, the Genoa flies the sheet sheets outside of the shrouds and the jib flies the sheets inside the shrouds so there's another time I can check for the twang anytime you can just double check make sure those ring dings aren't coming loose on those uh, on those shrouds so bring the general sheet around the outside of the shrouds on each side and then go under the stanchion into the cockpit toward the fair leads so right where my foot is about now, you can see the blocks for the jib on the top of the deck. Now down here in the cockpit is the fair leads for the Genoa sheets. So go through the fair lead, tie a figure eight knot, go clockwise around the winch two times. The winch handle sits right there all the time, except when I'm on, on uh, the other tack, then the winch handle is switched to the other winch. Then bring the other sheet line under Okay, outside the shrouds, then under the stanchion and into the cockpit through the fair lead, tie a figure eight knot, and then around the winch two times. Now, when I ordered the sheet line, the sheet for this, I added about 15 feet so that I could set up both uh, winches at the same time because I do a lot of single handed sailing and it's just easier to have one ready to go. As soon as I'm done winching on one tack, I move the winch to the other, the other winch so that I, as soon as I go about, I'm ready to go. Now, I use the mast crutch for raising the sail all the time. I do have a pigtail on the aft stay right there that will hold the boom on the water, but I found that if the, if the boat goes off from the center, then uh, I'm under sail. And by using the crutch, uh, the boom is able to swing to one side or the other if I'm still up working on the bow by the mast to raise the Genoa, for example, and the boom is free to move uh, sideways. So the crutch lets the boom go up and the pigtail holds it. Now I have the main sheet wrapped around the block tackle there a couple of times so that it could not be accidentally released. Now I'm flaking out the sheet line so that if the boom should catch some wind while I'm up or forward, it will, it will not get a, a knot caught in the, in the blocks and stop the boom from going out. Now I put this sail from the mast into the boom the same way every time so it's not twisted. It comes off the boom, goes in, comes off the, uh, into the mast that way so that um, I know every time if I do it the same way, I'm not going to have a twist when I raise 
the mainsail. Then uncleat the halyard, and the top one on the starboard side is for the mainsail. The bottom one is my second foresail that I added. I don't recommend putting it in line. The ropes, the, the, the halyards, I mean, tend to get in each other's way when they're lined up like that. I, so I don't think I did a very good job on that. So attach the halyard, of course, take a look aloft and make sure. Now up there I may have a twist. I think I set it up this way so I could show, but I'm, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so look up there, make sure it's not twisted, and then go ahead and attach your halyard line. And just wrap it around the cleat a couple of times to uh, keep the sail from falling out of the track. So the Genoa has been rigged, the sheet goes back to the cockpit, both sides, and the mainsail is, is rigged. I just need to remove the three manual ties around the boom. And what you should be doing, of course, is heading directly into the wind when you're on the lake. Here in the parking lot, there's not much wind. Uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, the ideal direction of the wind, but uh, it's not enough wind to be a problem. So there's three ties around the sail on the boom, and I can drop them right uh, into, the, into the cockpit or into the cabin. Um, this point in the cabin is, is better because they won't get blown. Then make sure the hatch is back. Uh, one time my son was sitting right there on the corner with the hatch open and then a wave came and he fell down below. So that's a dangerous spot for kids to sit unless the hatch is fully closed. It's a long way down, believe it or not. Now, uh, I just, uh, when raising the sail, I just have the rig, regular bolt sail and hold my fingers right down by the gooseneck with my hand palm open and just let the sail go through, not, you know, just through my fingers and then pull the halyard when the sail is lined up. So grab some sail, give it a shake, put your hand down low right by where the gooseneck is and then pull the halyard and raise the sail. If it gets caught, pull down a little bit and then go right back up again. This is easier if you point directly into the wind. Right now I'm not, so I've got a little bit of stress on the sail trying to raise it. Now wrap the halyard around the cleat. You can see already the boom has got free from the mast crutch, so it's able to swing sideways some. Raise, uh, by tightening the halyard around the cleat, you can now pull on the halyard and then take up the slack so that you have the sail fully raised. Then, once it's cleated off and fully raised, coil your dock, your halyard, and set it into the rope between uh, the mast and the halyard. I always put it in from the bow forward so that when I'm taking it out, I just pull it forward toward the forward hatch and it goes in and out the same way, then it doesn't get wrapped around the cleat when I'm up there in a blow. Once the mainsail is up, hopefully the boat's still pointing into the wind, and the next thing uh, you're gonna do is raise the Genoa. It's best uh, for me because my, my Genoa halyard is on the port side. If I'm a little bit off center on the wind so that the sail is flying actually on the starboard side of the boat, not the port side like it is right now. But, I pull, the, I pull the halyard not through the cleat, I pull it above the cleat so that I'm able to work the halyard from the, from the hatch if I need to. Then again, wrap it around the cleat, then pull tight to take up slack, make sure the sail's fully up, and then cleat it off, and hopefully you've been coiling the halyard as you raise it, stick it in uh, to the rope on the mast, then give a yank on the boom vang, which is the downhaul for the boom, and tighten that. Last is to remove the crutch, and I just set it under the cockpit on the berth down below. Now, you should be still motoring forward a little bit, and what you can do now is set your sails. Of course, the rudders are down and the centerboard is fully down already, and then you can pull on the Genoa sheet to set that sail first, and then pull on the main sheet to set the main sail according to the Genoa second. There's telltales and there's ways to read the wind. Uh, and what I'm describing now is if the telltales are pointing straight back on the top of the sail. There's two on the main sail and there's also two sets on the Genoa. So if they're flying straight back, you look up at those tabs, then you know you've got the wind set right. Now you can set your sail course and then check it by heading toward the wind. Turn toward the wind. Watch the sails for a luff. Now a luff on the sail is going to be, in this case on the mainsail, right by the boom. So that if you see this portion of the sail going like that, that's a luff. 
The same thing would apply on the Genoa if it's doing the same thing where it's attached to the forestay. Then back on the aft section of the sail, that's a flutter, and that is okay. So luffing is, uh, is, is not good. Flutter is okay. That's just a function of the sail shape with the outhaul and uh, the, the position of the sail. So you can set your, co your sails by the wind by turning into the wind, let the sails luff, then turn back away from the wind just slightly until they're full of wind, and that's your best course. If you remember nothing else about sailing, it's head up to the wind till it luffs, then fall off, and that's your best course. That's the best thing to remember. Head up till it luffs, then fall off, and that's your best course. Have a good day. Now I'm going to be de-rigging the sails because it's, well, I'm sitting in the parking lot and I'm going to go out sailing, so I might as well just take them back down. Uh, later in the video, it, uh, in the sailing video, in the second one, it does show uh, how to heave to and de-rig the mainsail on the water. And so I would not be using the crutch at this point, but if there's not a, not a lot of wind or you're headed straight into the wind and you can have the boat be sure to hold that course, uh, set the crutch up, put the boom in the crutch, and then go ahead and tighten the main sheet and wrap it around that block a few times so that it won't come undone accidentally. That'll hold the boom tight and securely. Walk forward, and then you can pull the main halyard out from the mast and flake it out a little bit so that it doesn't uh, get um, stuck. And then start drawing, dropping the mainsail. What you want to do is be sure it doesn't go in the water if your uh, boom is out on the side because you're not fully into the wind, like if you're heave two, for example, which I'll show in the next video. So pull the sail down, and then once the sail is almost off the track, wrap the halyard around the cleat to hold it in the track. Then some would flake the sail, some have lazy jacks, and there's different ways of, of uh, folding the sail. I've always done it this way. I just use a rolling method by tucking it and then reaching on the bottom and tucking in the middle. And I use my legs and my shoulder, actually my armpit, to hold the sail in place. Now at this point I have already retrieved the three nylon ties and I have them in my hand. And I'm leaning on the sail now and grabbing one tie and tying the, tying the boom, tying the sail onto the boom. Now you could tie one a little bit closer to the mast at this point. Um, and then, and then you tie three on the sail, and that's going to hold it. So just furl a bit more back here, lean on the sail, grab a tie, and just a bow tie is all that's needed. You don't need to be real tight on them. Uh, and let the sail fall under the boom. Actually, that's good because if you hit your head, you're going to have a pad there. <laughs> now, this last one I tie intentionally loose because I do put the main sheet through there when it's coiled to uh, take the boom off of the of the mast. So now I'm going to undo the main sheet, coil the line, and then grab the Velcro from the uh, from the pedestal table. Now I'm on uh, now I'm undoing the sheets from for the Genoa. I've taken a figure eight knot out, and you can just drop them right inside the hatch, and then retrieve the second sheet sheet and undo the, the knot and it comes under the stanchion and around the shrouds. Now in a blow, you can walk forward inside and stand in the hatch and just pull the sheets from forward. And then the only part you have to do is grab the halyard off of the cleats on the port side of the mast. If the sheets are wet at this point, I would throw them farther back into the cabin so they don't land on the floor and not rest on the V-berth cushions. Now, I'm going to go forward with the halyard line uncleated and just try not to have the sail go in the water when you're doing this. I'm actually standing inside the hatch at this point and I'm trying to talk, but I, I, um, at this point I'm dropping the sail finally down and then grabbing it and pulling it into the hatch. Now, uh, if you need to get back, you can just tie that halyard onto the stanchion or the cleat to hold it from flying up in the wind. But I'm going to go ahead and unhank the sail just for the sake of showing the whole D-rig. First thing is re-cleat the halyard onto the port bow cleat so that I'm ready to drop the mast. If that was the case, I was on the water to take the sails off and I was going to go in, the next step would be to use that halyard to hold the mast up after I have undone the forestay. Then unhank the sail. There's nine pins to unhank. 
and then at the bottom of the sail, the foot of the sail, there's the clip that holds the foot of the sail to the boat. Leave the clip right there so it's ready for any time for any of the sails that I use, any of the three sails. The dock line stays right there all the time. It goes through the cleat and then is wrapped around so it can't accidentally come off and be lost. And then I coil it there and I'm ready to use that for whichever side of the dock I end up going to. I can put that across to the other cleat and I can still reach the dock from that side cleat. There's no reason to move it to the other cleat. Then, of course, I leave it coiled there on the, on the top of the boat for when I'm getting my street shoes on and off to keep the grease and the mud off the boat. Or I can go back through there if it's windy, or I can just come out this way and close the hatch and walk, forward, walk aft if, it, if it's not too windy. Now this is going to show a close-up of a couple of the parts here. This is the part where I'm going to unbolt the mask and get ready to raise it. I've got the bolt and nut in my hand, bring it back to the mast step plate, slide the bolt under the centerboard cable and put the nut next to it on the starboard side. Then walk back to the mast. This is the problem that many people have is getting these spreaders out from under the lifelines. Right here. I just stand, stand here next, next to the mast step, plate, raise it up, and, and bring it to one side so the shroud is able to come the above the lifeline. Slowly pull Don't one shredder rather today. up above the lifeline, and then raise the mast higher and, higher and pulling it to I the go. other side so the second spreader comes above the lifeline. Then look behind you for people or cars, there, raise the mast clear, high, and it rolls and right down up, on the clutch very simply. You must clear the stanchions with the spreaders. To where it's going to hit the mass plate. Then, when it's approximately the right on, length extended, I, do, I just sit on the, hand, ma on the mass, and that holds it in place. I just there, picked up the bolt that was lying under it. the centerboard. There it is, Pull under the, the centerboard bolt. cable, and then yeah. align it to the, the holes in the mass step For plate. One side, and then the other. Again, I'm holding it down by sitting on it. You can you can use your hands. It's very lightweight, and then pick up the nut and. I just use these nylon, nylon lock nuts, nuts finger tight. I never have had one come loose, although I do carry a spare sheet of hardware for everything off. on the boat. That is a, is a 9 16 The other main nut so used is a 7 16 like Here you can see I've got sure two plugs. I've got the regular that. plug that came with the boat the for the mast headlight, and there's the second plug for the anchor light at the far end of the mast, which I added for overnight camping on the boat. So I just changed the plug out, and that will... Uh, uh, that the, uh, will light up the appropriate light, light and I can and control it on and off and plug in from the, the same masthead switch on the fuse the panel the inside the boat. Anchoring. Since you only use one light at a time, just changing With the plug the, on uh, my redid. anchor is easy. Now this is preparing to raise the mast. I need the jib halyards in order to do that. And you can see I've got two cleats on that side and one cleat on the other side so I can fly three sails at the same time, two four sails and the main I put an extra large knot through the cleat on that jib halyard so it can't come out. Get it all the way extended and then go forward with the review and unhook the halyard from the U-bolt on the mast bring it fully extended forward and set it down right on the deck. Right here. Be sure there's no wires so no or ropes or any lines the under the mast First where, this, where the mast where it's up will go the onto the plate. So I'm going to head back here and check both Now the, back uh, in the cockpit, we're just reviewing getting the, the shrouds up the over the lifelines and checking for twists or kinks. Should be on top of and the you check the uh, other end where it's bolted to the mast the same way. Two on the port side. Look at this bolt here. One, two there. I've got both of these up on top. One, two there. And I've looked at the chain plates down then, there, and they're nice and straight. on the starboard not side, twisted. same thing. There's Drop two. One. Pull one up, check it. Pull the second one up and check it. Make sure it's not twisted. Then check on the here. other ends, check on the mast, right those two places. And the last is the aft stay. Make sure it's not tangled in the prop. Sometimes fully extend it. Now that pigtail sometimes has seat. hooked on the captain's seat, and fitting. so I so set I'm it right on the, um, the on the seat in the cockpit the between the rudder and the aft stay. The now grab the, the halyard Make sure not and the fore stay in one hand. Get all the other lines out of the Gather way up the, the ropes. The make sure they're point. not under your feet. The hatch now, must be fully here. closed, especially for lowering, Sometimes but also for raising the mast. Make sure these other halyards so, are not caught underneath the mast hatch bolt. All the way closed. This is critical, and especially when make sure everything's the mast, out of the way. Right Stand the on the aft end of the hatch, holding the halyard and jib 
and four safe. Right under. Raise the mask just, just a couple of inches to make sure everything is clear from the from the mask crutch. Clear. Nothing's caught. Now, I'm then ready look to go forward. Up, so then just give a little raise up to shoulder height. Turn and nice, then shove slow, or push, the, push the, mask the mask forward. And the shrouds will the actually shape, straighten the mask when you're near the top. One thing that's very important, if there's a lot of wind, you always park so that the boat has the wind from astern. You Here's don't the want the wind blowing the sideways, Take and you certainly don't want the wind blowing the mast from the bow the back. The or the, or the block. <laughs> so the aft wind will help push now, the mast I'm up. The mast with my right then hand. wrap your arm I've around the mast, around my left hand. grab the halyard forward like of the mast, now, it's not that and then hard. when you've got a good way, tight grip on it, let go of the mast, take a good squeeze on the halyard, and step two or three steps forward to the bow cleat, and cleat off that jib halyard to hold up the mast. That mass is That's up. done. Now Knuckles. I've got all the time I need and to set the four stay, undo the ring ding, set it right down. I don't think it's going to matter much. Between and I the two not cleats. To go all that. So I put the cleavage pin there. Set your foot me, to the starboard the side of the starboard cleat. There. And I hold the cleavage pin in my fingers. Make sure that the fitting then I push on down the four stay here is fully extended. Hold this so it doesn't pop it does up. See up how that moves down. up and down? Put so your thumb and finger right on that fitting to push it down. Set your foot. Against the cleat, against the set your knee against knee the pulpit here. for support. Of course, I got the other Hold on tight and get here. your other foot now ready to so give a shove on that halyard to get the uh, force they have more slack. The leverage the there is the best to give the force stay slack. Now, so now some I've people undo the undo the, the turnbuckle in, and then halyard. they tighten the turnbuckle and then now they reinsert the pins and and take some time to tighten the force stay more than that. And here. on the lake sailing, for me, it hasn't seemed to make a difference in the sailing, so I don't bother with that most of the time. Twist it in place. Insert the ring ding, spin it around, make sure it's fully done. Now, the now your mask is this held by the force stay, and you're all it's done. This shows, the shrouds. Uh, again, once so again, checking check the ring dings on the shroud. And, just get and, it off and that twanging the shroud, there. I can see that one of the ring dings wasn't so flipping around, around this way. so it was starting to uh, work its when way you move uh, this, you see the ring dings flip. Uh, by going down and giving it a twist, easily, I can make wiggly, sure that it wasn't uh, going to come loose. Get it so it's not starting to come. Lock now, right I'm opening the hatch for the first time. I just leave the padlock right on the hatch because like I, I can use it to close it. I don't think the handle there is a good place because the hatch can move. And then bring the boom up between the aft stay and the rudder and the crutch that would be. Set it right on the crutch. Set it up on here. Now, always one hand on the boat. And one hand for me. Neck here. First so time I did this took a while. Just rest the boom right on my foot here. My leg. Just or do the top one. Set Here's it down. Here's a little closer shot of the fittings then to hold the, the boom one. onto the mast. Hang There's on two bolts the and nuts. They're seven sixteenths. And uh, I do carry a toolkit in the anchor locker if I can't get one loose or I need to tighten one more. I can twist the boom vertical. And slide it up there and open end wrench. So insert the first bolt. Through the gooseneck, push down on the bolt so that it's fully all the way uses. down. That's very important for and taking again, it off. Tight with these nylon then lock nuts to give an extra little twist on the nut at the end. Slide, slide the sail forward, the forward and align the second bolt through the crew of the sail. Grab the second nut, nut now, one and attach thing I the second change. nut to hold the clue of the sail on. That's tight. Once again, a review. This is on the boom bang. Unwrap that from the sail. And here, I've gone to a snatch block. Here's that Ron Stan snap shack that so cost about twenty-five dollars that I added so, uh, to the block. This is not a so ring thing attached anymore. Just loosen this up. The boom bang from the U-bolt on the mast. That's an easy this one. This is the downhaul that prevents the boom from flying high and jo in a jive. Back to here. here, this just is a reminder about that when way, you take the sail out of the track of the mast. You bring it down and you put and it the into the tie that holds it the same way. I changed that to a captive type so that it won't fly off. It's got a There's pin going through there. There's that captured halyard pin so that, no that can't what, come off, so I don't even need to re come loose tighten the fitting the all the time. I can leave it loose like on the jib halyard. It's loose right now the up on the bow cleat, and it can't come off the rope. I always put in the bow of the back, so when I'm up here, I can always Now, see, this shows the halyard coming in from the bow, so that I always take it on and put it off the same way. I'm going to cleat off the halyard so it holds the sail until I'm ready to raise it. I had to go back because my boat This shows the boat fully rigged, showing the boom on and attached to the dock, to the dock uh, to pedestal table guard. And 
Now at this point, I'm on the water again. and it's been, the uh, wind has completely died. A calm wind I'm about day. 45 minutes away from sunset. And the wind has totally so died. We're what I'm going to do with this glossy smooth water anywhere. and no boats so, around uh, anywhere sunset's gonna is be I'm going to go ahead and de-rig the, the boat on the water. water. There's no waves, no nothing. We're going to do the boom. So I'm going to first undo so I'm undoing the, uh, the main sheet, I'm undoing the boom. unhook it from the, the pedestal table guard. Wrap it around Wrapping the boom it and for storage the purposes. The tuck the sheet the into the back. tie on the boom. Then walk forward and unhook the boom vang. Wrap it around the mask, around the boom rather, and, and then wrap the fit. end of the line to secure it Have a seat on the deck. onto the boom. Undo so I'm going to sit right on the cabin top, the just the opposite of what I just showed. So I'm undoing the first bolt that held the clue of the sail. Then I'm pushing down and twisting the boom side to side to get that nut all the way, that bolt all the way down. Then I can undo the bolt, uh, the nut with my fingers. Then once it's off, I reattach the nut to the two bolts right then so the hardware is always on the boom. Again, carry spares just in case one goes overboard. They're cheap, and just stick a bunch in a, in a little bucket and a little uh, container down below. And go back to the now holding on. Walk back to the, the cap to the to cockpit. The lift the boom. The bring it between the clutch and the aft stay, the the and then the, aim the boom the for the center floor. Push the hatch forward a bit. Walk down, raise it, and set the forward part of the boom on, up above the V berth and set the aft end of the boom on the floor between the step, the, floor the, the step and the seat aft of the galley. Rest it on the front of the v -berth. Then this is very important. In order to drop the mast, the you have important. to have Make that sure clutch in, in and you have to have that hatch yeah, all straight. the way back. If it's part way back and you're walking toward it and it starts sliding, that's a very dangerous condition. Again, you want no wind, you, and you want uh, no waves, and you want no boats, and you want to be very, very smooth on the water, or I would not recommend this. So now I've got the halyard, the jib halyard is attached to the port bow cleat. I've undone the ring ding and taken out the clevis pin by using my foot as leverage on that halyard. I'm putting the clevis pin and the ring ding back onto the halyard, the force, the force day, so that Turn, I have right it uh, for the next time I need to Reaching attach it. Mask, now holding on to the, the mast, halyard, up, I reach the back halyard, for the mast and, then and hold on to the mast. The hatch is, all the way back, the hatch is fully back. Walk slowly just slowly the step hatch, forward on top of the hatch, and let my hands walk along the, the mast as the it drops. Mast, line it up with the crutch, the crutch and set it right in. Very easy now the mast is down onto the crutch. And I'm already derigged. All I'd have to do I is tie the fender fenders off. Uh, here, now this is my fender trick for a single-handed uh, de-launching at the ramp uh, in a crosswind. The, uh, the fenders fender have snap put, hooks on. I attack one to, go to the upper lifeline next to the aft stanchion and one to the lifeline, the upper uh, lifeline next to the forward uh, stanchion. Pull the boat forward while it's in the water on the onto the trailer. Side of the boat I don't drive it on. I just walk it on. on to After the dock. it's pulled uh, forward, so we hang down about the proper height for the docks that into the bow the chalk there. Now, like once it is the boat is on the trailer, I take this but the trailer is still in the water. And, and as I've landed, I've got the trailer and I've walked the boat forward. Then I take a dock on it. I mean, a fender rod. Put the lifeline back up. I take a fender rod out of the second line to it with one more snap hook. And I hang it onto the lifelines. You know, Here these shows, you can get these, they're two for two bucks at Walmart. And they're tied at the these right snap height for the launch ramp docks here. And so I hang it onto them the lifeline, and I just jockey now, it in position while the boat's floating in the water on the floor, here, uh, where it's, where it's already the winched up in the bow. And I just kind of play with it while it's floating so that the fender will be about equidistant on the post. And this is used this is just to align the boat with the proper spacing. This shows some rubber foam, which is like you can buy an auto So that when I'm coming out and the wind's blowing the boat onto this side, this is to how to space the boat, the boat uh, on a wind, crosswind at the launch ramp. 
So uh, that this fender space sitting between so the boat and the trailer I post the will help to space the, the boat properly here. so that it won't be sitting so on the, the steel fender. Won't be sitting up on the Without fender. that fender, if I didn't have that installed rubber fender post, in there, the boat's going to be sitting right on that steel fender when I come out. So this is how I so that you get black paint all over the boat and actually can be sitting on the fender after you pull out. So with the wind blowing toward this side, you install the fender there, and that actually will space the boat better than if someone was actually trying to jockey it for you. Having come out of the launch ramp the and drained the ballast, need to get that then up uh, the boat sometimes to, falls back you know, from the top part, and you really wear on the winch if you scoop. were to try to winch it forward what by hand. So I'm going to show you what's called the a McGregor bump or the McGregor scoop, where you actually drive and use the so brakes Marine, to move the boat like forward into the trailer so it's all the way forward for trailing purposes. So by driving the boat the van forward in just a minute now you'll see the boat slide forward i did change out the uh, carpeting on the trailer bunks just about uh, oh two weeks before this was shot and i found the boat moves forward much more easily there you can see just going slower slowly forward and then and then using the brakes on the van the boat just slid forward into that bow chalk very easily come out and winch it tight and then at this point, if it's scooted a bunch, you might need to readjust the lines on the, on the back of the trailer. The, uh, metal here, Here's how so it I drag hold on the, the ground and wear that uh, plug out plug when I'm for the lights so it won't drag on the ground ramp. by sticking it now, through right here, the brake line. I've got now a here, hole. You can this see is how I can back the boat up. Right see that drill a hole, hole through the outside right through frame both and sides of both there, metals in right the fender, where it angles the up inner, from the outside here. And it's about a quarter inch diameter hole. And this is what I use and in order to be able to back up the boat on the trailer when I'm in the side yard. I've got an old rusty bolt here that's hanging on a piece of wire off the chain. And so I've got this old pin here that is held on to the chain by a wire and I have an extra piece of wire on there that I can help hold it up so it doesn't drag on the ground. And I can insert this pin into the hole right through right through there and you can see it runs right through and the hole in the trailer frame and that will prevent the surge brakes from, from activating when I back up the hill. Now, now the problem is if you, if you leave, leave that, that pin in there you and you go road, driving you down no the road then you so have I no surge brakes so it's very dangerous if you, if you forget, to, if forget yet, to remove that. That's a dangerous thing. So There's I an always think of that and look at the trailer lights and check the hitch get before I get in. Uh, I have a note on my dashboard even to remind me to pull the, the trailer for you automatically when you back up. This is a tip from the Windbury uh, so I website. So this wire down here is to hold that bolt up off the ground so it doesn't drag. Then uh, it's out I of hold there the now. pin up and the next and thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my trailer lights. And okay, now I'm going to show the trailer hitch. There's a couple of things about the McGregor Again, trailer hitch that uh, I found I had a tough time initially. And, and so, so uh, uh, I'm going to show how I hitch the, the, the trailer up just that, in case uh, you're having trouble uh, the first couple times on hitching. Now, I use now, my van only for towing, so I don't normally now. have to unhitch it very often. But when I do, uh, there's a couple of tips I'll, I'd like to give you about that. A piece of wheel in the bag, a piece of gut mud on it or something, but it always stays in the van so that I have it when I want to unhook the trailer. Take out the pin you pull and the pin out, and this you have to have the winch down a couple of turns in order to insert the pin through it. It's now, it's best to line the wheel up, the wheel up so going straight, forward and backward so like this, way, this as opposed to across, so that you can move way, the trailer. You, kind of you, don't want, you want the wheel pointing forward, in other words, like this, so you can pull the, pull the thing up and line and it up. If you're on a slope, you need to put some blocks under the trailer tires to hold it so that it doesn't start rolling as soon as you come off the van. Today this is then, pretty flat, so it's not a big deal. First thing is Once to you got the wheel on put there, the wheel down. You crank, and, and the trick is to hold this little tip. latch right here. Hold There's some teeth so on the trailer, up, and if you just hold that latch real lightly with your and fingers, then real lightly let as it go, you're cranking it the trailer the up, it seems to come off easier. Give a little back and forth motion there, and there then. At some point, and it'll also very important when trailer. you go back down to do the same thing. You just put a little bit of tension it's on it. It's actually more important going down than down picking on it up on doing this part. Pull it up and so on you there. slowly just uh, okay. move your finger on that latch. Hook. Then when you're you done the with chain, that, undo the, the surge brake, undo the chain, and then make sure the pin is out, and then undo your lights. Now here's another tip. We actually need two pieces of wood. I use smaller ones, though so they're only one inch thick, but I have these two by fours Here in the back go, of the van is what I have with me at the launch two ramp. Pieces of wood, if you're you can take two pieces like of wood, so when you're going to leave the trailer and you're like in your side yard where you're going to come right back to it at some point, sometime, right put a piece spot. of wood 
against if, the left uh, rear you tire of, of your right tow vehicle. The back one on the back, on the left side, right up there, the tire, behind it, so you know where to back to, and one on the outside, the on the then left side of it, so that you can sight when you're backing up to where the van needs to be and how it should be aligned. Now, it won't be perfect every time, but you're going to know within a few inches exactly where that trailer hitch needs to be. Another tip is up. some people have uh, you can't put a magnet like that, of course you can on the top of the trailer with a small hole, a little, in the like a, almost like a metal so, antenna, radio uh, antenna, that goes simple. up. And, and then they can uh, look out the their back, back window on, and see but where the trailer the is by that little antenna that sticks up off the trailer. Bring it on down. For me, the wood and, uh, on the wheel, wheel back, location looks bit, fine for me. Or you can bring the van so back this shows bit, backing up, and then the trick is to have the teeth that stick down from inside the trailer hitch go under the ball as you're lowering it. So the height, by the way, 17 inches to the top of the ball, and that's from the, the ground, uh, that's the recommended and height a two-inch ball, ball it's the ideal height uh, to have the a McGregor trailer level uh, on the trailer when you're towing. So when you come down nice now, and slow, you want the teeth to be behind the ball, not on top of it. And as the front of the trailer hitch behind the ball, comes around the ball, and then you get that started behind the ball, and then you just and so those teeth Flip the, underneath the there latch just mechanism go right up so those teeth can ball. slide right under the and round portion of the ball on the back side. The trailer will slide forward. So as it goes and snugs up against the ball, right now as it goes down, pulling on the latch, click. and then it just clicks in place. Now bring the ball, uh, if you're the too wheel, far forward and those up. teeth are on top of the ball, you're going to have to move the van forward the or move the trailer on, back so that those teeth can get behind. And Likewise, go under the I ball. keep my spare tire line down Then get the, the wheel here. all the way up off the ground. Be sure you move it because it'll hit if you're going off a curve it or, or it's a speed so bump it's, even it's in the road. Not gonna work for me. Get so it all the way up the sun in there and then also. take the wheel so off, off of the trail. And then I stick, stick it right, right back in so you don't lose it. Always keep the hardware right with the parts. tow vehicle goes, goes the wheel. I don't know if I showed this now, or not. Here's something that I think I wanted to mention. This is very important it's for the uh, fuel stabilizer stable. called Stable. S T A B I L. You can buy it at Walmart, store. auto parts stores, fuel, marine stores. Uh, and this is very this important, especially in the wintertime, but I use it year round so to stabilize my fuel so it doesn't get gum in the carburetors so or in the injectors in the motor. You put about two ounces per five gallons, and this will prevent gumming up of your motor. And this is, I had problems the first year with my car. Carburetor that was placed on the warranty, and, uh, it's and no fun uh, I had to sail them to the dock a few times without few power. Times Believe me, that's uh, not fun in, the, in a real strong wind. So, uh, the other thing I carry in the van is uh, some rust paint, black so spray up. paint. Uh, so, if ramp, I come out of a launch ramp in the summertime and I've got some places where I see the paint's chipped off, I can touch that up without getting paint on the boat. I carry tools and, uh, and you know I stuff to change the tire out and other things in the back, back of the van. That, uh, I keep my spare tire in there you know, also. I'm putting the lock back on. Like carry okay, a padlock on, uh, and all the keys are on one the uh, system with a floaty. And the then there's check the lights. The lights by the way, and again, it'll uh, drag on the ground if you just unhook it at the launch ramp and it'll wear that metal pin out. So just stick it through the brake line right there and that'll help keep it from dragging on the ground when you're launching at the ramp. Then you've got your chain and your surge brake hook. The other three things that you have to hold the boat. This is the pin I use to prevent the surge. Oh. Now I'm going to show uh, the, the we one minute Brian mass, Ripley, believe it or not, one minute rig and launch. Ripley, so I just pulled to the so ramp and drove, driven straight to the dock. I just arrived. Right now I'm undoing the trailer lights the, uh, and the I'm walking line. back to unto, untie the two dock lines on the aft docking the fleets. The so this is the first step that I do when I'm going to rig the boat and raise the mast. But today, uh, this is the, the one minute rig so you can go out and power around, for example, if it's going to be getting dark, or if you want to just go out for a sunset cruise, or if you're going to go out and not need to raise the mast or use the sails for a while. So you can go out and just power around and have a one minute launch. Right now, I'm on the starboard side of the boat and I'm untying the dock line that goes around the trailer frame on the other side of the boat. And I've raised the, the motor so that I can take the bracket up. And I left the rudder bolts in this time because I won't be needing the rudders. Although sometimes powering, if you're in a slip and you want control, then you would need the rudders. So that would be another way to do that, is take the two rudder bolts out at that time.
So now I've, I've chosen the dock side where the wind is blowing the boat off of the dock, so I don't need to put out the rubber fenders because the wind will blow the boat away from the dock. If I was on the other side of the dock, the wind was blowing the boat onto the dock, then I would put out the fenders. All I have to do now is back the boat up and tie it off and launch, and I'm all set. That's the Brian Ripley one minute, believe it or not, rig and launch. Now I'm going to show the de-rigging process. So we're going to go through taking the mast down uh, after you come out of the launch ramp on a regular day. First thing I'm doing is I retrieve the bolts from the, from the back of the van. I stick them under the floor mat so they don't roll around and get lost. And I'm putting the, rubber, the rudder bolts onto the rudders to hold them up for trailing. Now the ballast valve should be left open so that it can have air and, and drain if there's any water that's still left. And then you set the bracket on the motor so for trailing so that it doesn't put stress on the hydraulic lift. And now I'm tying the dock line on the starboard side from the aft docking cleat around the trailer frame and back up to the cleat. Now let's take this one. And again, these two dock lines are always there when I'm launching the boat or retrieving the boat so I can go to either side of the dock when I'm, when I'm coming in. Now tie off the cleat or, or the dock line rather so that now it's secured to the trailer for, for driving down the road. Now we hook the trailer lights so that you have power and brake lights when you're going down the road because you're all done being in the water. Then up the ladder and I'm standing right on the dock line that I use as a floor mat, if you will, to take my shoes off. Now it's kind of cold, it's uh, December, I think, so I'm going to put my water shoes on and wear those on the boat in the wintertime. First thing is to take the boom off and in order to loosen the boom off the mast, you have to undo the main sheet that I have wrapped around the mast crutch. So I have the quick release snap shackle, take the main sheet off the uh, pedestal table guard, wrap it around the boom, go forward, sit next to the mast, take off the boom vang tackle, wrap it around the boom, and secure it. Then undo the first nut and bolt that holds the clue of the sail into the goose neck fitting. Then twist the boom and push with your finger down on the bolt and then undo the nut on the bottom of the bolt that holds the boom onto the mast. Once that's loose, set the boom right on your leg and then you're still holding the nut and bolt that you just took out, so reinsert it. Then pick up the other nut and bolt that's sitting on the deck next to your leg and insert that and just put them on finger tight. And when you're moving about the boat, try to hold on to something. Uh, you know, always my rule is one hand for the boat and one hand for me if I'm going to carry something. Set the boom right on top of the deck. On the, it's actually on the hatch, right in the middle, so it's right against the mast. Then lift the boom off the crutch, go aft between the crutch and the aft stay, and again aim for the center of the, of the floor, then lift it above the V-berth, set the aft end down between the step and the galley, and then set the top end down on the V-berth. Take off the cooler from the pedestal guard, very important, slide the hatch all the way back. Now I've looked, the crutch is in place, the hatch is all the way back, the, the, the jib halyard is attached to the port bow cleat, and I'm ready to drop the mast. First thing, undo the ring ding, set it down, and then, if necessary, use my foot as leverage on the halyard to create slack in the forestay. Pull out the clevis pin, release the halyard, then put the clevis pin back in, Retrieve the ring ding that's sitting between the cleats and insert the ring ding back into the clevis pin to hold the hardware onto the forestay. Okay, now set the forestay down. And remember the wind is blowing from aft, not from the bow. Very important if there's a lot of wind and never in a crosswind. Always line the boat up so the wind is from the stern of the boat. Hold the halyard line tight. Get it as high above your head as you can. Hold it out to your left, step forward and grab the mast. Once you have the mast, release the halyard, clear your feet from the lines, walk forward on the hatch, bring your hands back, and then drop the mast down into the crutch.
Now, it's not real heavy. I'm holding the mask up with one hand right now, and then just dropping it with one hand, line it up into the crutch, and set it back down. It's very simple to do without the furler. Now, I've never done it from this side of the mask before. Make sure the lines are clear from the mask crutch, and raise the mask up to shoulder height, and then shove forward and holding it up this way with, uh, with the other hand grabbing for the halyard. Now I'm going to just drop it back down again, walk forward, walk aft rather, and then line it up with the crutch and back down. So I've done a couple of mass raisings and lowerings, and I'm into this is about seven minutes. And now I'm all done with the jib halyard, and I'm reattaching the jib halyard to the U-bolt on the mast. Then I'm taking up the slack where the jib halyard was fully extended with that extra large knot through the cleat. And well cleaning off now. the jib halyard. I'm grabbing all three halyards, the main and the two foresail halyards, and I'm wrapping them around the mast. I'm all done with them. Might as well just get them out of the way now. When you get uh, to, to the end of one, you just you know wrap the remaining long line around, and you keep going until you're out of, of line, and then put now, it through the loop the and give it snug tight. Next step is to undo the mast from the mast stepping plate and standing on the hatch, raise it up high so it, the spreaders are above the lifeline stanchions and walk it forward so that you can then slide the mast to one side, push down on a spreader and get it under a lifeline. Set the mast down on the bow pulpit, move your feet to the other side, then lift it back up, slide the mast sideways put the other spreader under the lifeline and set the mast straddle back down. So the I straddle it so I, not on, uh, so I have good balance, walk I forward, and there. I still got the bolt and nut in my hand the whole time from when I undid it from the mast step, and insert it into the pulpit bracket, and then tighten the nut on, okay. give it a little extra tight right there, uh, so the mast is now held into the pulpit. Walking back, I'm holding on to the mast and onto the lifeline. The next step is to gather the four stay right next to the mast crutch. So I'm going to start coiling the line. The first thing I have to do is take out the bolt from the mast crutch. Then I start with the four stay right next to the crutch. And here I've had I had it caught on a on a spreader up there, so I had to gather that. That doesn't usually happen. Another way to do this is to walk back and dump the. Uh, dump the four stay overboard onto the land and then it won't bounce around and make dings in the gel coat. So now I'm coiling the four stay right next to the crutch. And once I get to the end of it, then I've already, when I took the bolt out of the crutch, I put a piece of Velcro around my pinky finger. And once I've got it coiled, I'm gonna set it onto the rubber that is in the crutch. Then I'm gonna bend the metal flange up so that it's held onto the uh, mass crutch and it can't spring loose. Then I take the Velcro and wrap it around the uh, stay that's coiled so that it doesn't get all squirrely looking. Then I have a second piece of Velcro just to keep it nice and neat. Now duck under the mast and go to the other side and get the aft stay out of the prop. Gather it up from the aft and walk forward to the mass crutch and then begin coiling, coiling the aft right stay here. right next to the crutch. Now my aft stay is always attached to the back of the boat, the stern on the transom. So uh, I just gather and coil as much as I can, and I have another piece of Velcro that I took off the mast bolt, off the bolt, and I'm gonna first stick the aft stay onto the crutch, and then I'm gonna bend, or, you know, fold the metal flange up, and then I'm going to put the okay, Velcro the onto the aft the stay to help hold it so it's looking here good. Here I use my shoulder to lift the mast up okay. and sight into the hole for the bolt that goes Switch into the mast crutch. The then, picking up the nut, the move to the other side, the use the my shoulder to sight into the hole, lift the mast, and, and then push the bolt through to the, through the starboard side of the, of the crutch, and then attach the nut. So now the mast is bolted fore and aft, and the rest is just okay, lines right. to now, secure it so it doesn't bounce and uh, sway when you're trailing. Here, I I sail, so the first 
is to add another dock line onto the starboard cleat, wrap it around the mast and get, get it snug, bring it up around the mast one more time, hold on tight, move to the port side of the boat, and then cleat it on to the already cleated dock line around the trailer frame. Next is the dock line that goes above the hatch, and I just put it through the loop and then give it three or four wraps around the mast to make a padded area for the shrouds to sit on so they won't be scratching the mast. Then reach and gather one shroud and take the slack up so that its uh, chain plates are not going to be sitting on the gel coat. Gather the second shroud and again take the slack up so the chain plate is off of the gel coat. Go to the starboard side of the boat and gather those two shrouds then walk back and straddle the mast, get them taut so they're not off the gel coat and off the deck, set them on top of the rope, wrap the rope across the top of the four shrouds, and wrap it around till you're out of slack, make a loop, and then give it a yank. So now the shrouds are secured off of the boat and the chain plates are off of the gel coat. Now there's one more piece of rope I tossed up here which I carry in the fuel locker. This prevents the mast from flexing in the middle. And it's a smaller, thinner line that goes through the mast step holes. So there's a loop, a bolt on one end, and it goes through the mast step and around the mast, tie a couple of figure eight, a couple of half hitch knots rather, and uh, push down on the mast as you tighten and snug it up. And so now you've got the mast secured in the middle and you've got it secured to the aft and you've got it secured at each end with the bolts. So I'm all done with the D-Rig. Now I'm just taking off my water shoes and putting on my, boat, my, my street shoes and stepping off of the boat onto the ladder. I usually just take the bow dock line that stays on the cleat and I put it in the anchor locker for storage. It's a good time to walk around the boat and check things, but here you can see uh, the boat's tied there's the tie around the aft mast. See the two see the pulleys two up there, so that's the two blocks for the two halyards. I added one extra one up there. That's why I'm doing one bolt so you can fly two sails. So I can fly there's two four sails at once. The four stay and the aft stay. There's the shrouds tied off. There's the spreaders under the lifelines. There's the line that holds the mast step area. There's the three halyards wrapped around the mast. There's the two plugs for the lights. There's my two plugs, one for the mast headlight and one for the power, one for the anchor lights. Sitting in the forward hatch companionway. Other still powering. Building the building uh, out of the, the lake. Leaving the windy area of the lake. There's a 50 horsepower motor with uh, 50 volts with no direct. Back there you see there are changes from glossy to black. You can see looking at the water by the spot of wind. You can see the black water with no ripple back there. And a buckle lake. You can see the water with no ripple back there. You can see the water with no ripple back there. Forward over here, it's glass of water with just slight ripples on it. This is beginning of some wind coming. So this is a tip on spot in the wind. You can be in one place and have no wind, like right here, here. it's pretty glassy. And then you can pan the camera around. Yeah. Got a lens cap there. Uh, and you can see the beginning of some wind on the water right there where you see some ripples. And the blacker the water, the more wind go here. Until you get to the point where there's white caps on the water. Then there's different degrees of white caps, the flowing, drifting water horizontally off the white caps and more like the Right here, there's glassy water. It's real dark, so you got a small coming. Way in the background, there's some dark color on the water, there's a bit more wind down here. So this shows the benefits of the larger motor and power. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this rigging tape. Speedy rigger, rigging and de rigging should help save you some time and uh, now you can see I'm out here sailing I'm kind of sitting on the wrong side I see a little more wind coming up here if you want to get some sailing tips and some mods and some, some other tips on the boat and not so much rigging and putting the sails up and all that just some real sailing stuff that's on the next video for right now I hope you enjoyed this one email me with some tips or questions anytime speedyrigger.com this is Jeff Stagg saying thank you very much.